Hello, welcome to a coding challenge. My name is Dan. I don't know why I'm introducing myself at the beginning of this one because anyway, but I can because I just did. Um, this is a coding challenge. I am going to build off of, in some ways, a coding challenge that I did previously. Um, and I want to look at animated circle packing. Uh, and I want to look at animated circle packing in the context of forming letter forms. <laughs> Can I do all this in a coding challenge? I think that I can. I'm going to use Processing, which is a programming environment built on top of Java. Uh, I will also hopefully release a JavaScript version of this, so you can check this description for the source code. After I make this, I'll release the code in both Processing Java and also JavaScript using a P5.js library. So circle packing is one of these uh, co uh, almost computational cliche algorithms in a way. Um, there's some images here from an artist named Marius Watts who uh, does lots of beautiful and interesting engaging uh, computational work and has worked with circle packing. And the idea of circle packing is fit a lot of circles, as many as you can, of varying sizes in a small space or a large space and don't have them overlap. So um, in order to do this, the first thing that I want to do is I actually want to create a circle class. So I'm going to say class circle. And what does every circle have in my world? Every circle has an x and a y, storing values for its center. And every circle has a radius, the distance between its center and the edge. And then I, I, I'm going to need some other stuff that I just happened. But I'm gonna, you know, for now, I'm just going to put that there. So when I make a class, which is a template for making objects, I need to have, write a constructor function. And my constructor function will take three arguments because whenever, uh, and actually, uh, actually just two arguments. Let's just give it an x and a y. Because whenever I create a circle, I want to say create a circle at, this at, at a particular location. And then x gets that particular value and y gets that particular value. Now, I'm doing something kind of goofy here, <laughs> which is that the arguments of the constructor, I'm using, I'm using the same variable name as the properties of the object itself, but just with the underscore afterwards. And what that does, it allows me to sort of differentiate these temporary uh, ar uh, constructor arguments to fill the actual variables of the object. But you know, it's kind of a confusing convention, but it's one that I'm kind of used to, so I'm going to use that here. So what this means is now I can say something like circle C, and I can say, I'm going to, in uh, processing, I'm going to say size, uh, let's just say uh, 640, 360, um, and in draw, I'm going to say background zero, and then I'm going to say in setup, C equals a new circle, 200, 200, and I can run this program, and ta-da! I have a circle. <laughs> Where is it? I don't see it, because what do I want to do? I want to write a some functionality in the circle object itself. <laughs> I'm going to call it uh, show. And I'm going to use the ellipse function, which is a function processing that draws a ellipse and an ellipse with a width and height, the diameter across the horizontal and vertical axes of the same amount is a circle. And what should that diameter be? It's the radius times two. So now, if I said something like c.display, Ah, I didn't call it display. I called it show. <laughs> ah. ah, where's that circle? Hmm. I don't know why I don't see that circle. Uh, interesting problem here. Ah, why? Well, r has, what's the value of r? The value of r is 0. So let's give the value of r uh, 50 right now. And let's also be a little more thoughtful here and say stroke 255 and no fill. So now I see there's my circle. Now, uh, you, I don't know how well you can see this. I can zoom in and you can see it. But I'm going to just increase the thickness of the line just because, I don't know, in terms of broadcasting this on YouTube and all that sort of stuff. So you can see there's the nice, beautiful, lovely circle. Oh, I love that circle. That circle is my friend. <laughs> OK, I got to move on. OK, so what do I want to do now? What I want to do now is not just have one circle. I need a system where I'm going to keep track of many circles. And a way I can do that in Java is using something called an ArrayList. Now, oops, I, this syntax is a little bit goofy. An array list is an object that keeps, a li that keeps a list of objects. And I can say in advance, I want a list of objects of type circle. And that's what I'm doing right here, and that list is called circles. So now, instead of having a single variable, I can say uh, circles.push new circle. And then I can say, uh, for every, and this is a nice little uh, enhanced loop that you can write in Java these days with array lists. 
You can say, for, oh, I'm standing in front of this, for every circle C in the array list circles, operate, call the show function on those circle C. So for every circle, call show. Okay, here we go. Oh, it's not push. It's not push at all. <laughs> this is me. I'm the kind of person who programs in too many languages these days. It's add. Push would be a function in JavaScript to push something into an array. In Java, using ArrayList, the function is add. So now if I do this, we can see, ah, ah, what happened? I got a null pointer exception. See that null pointer exception? <laughs> That's the sound that goes, the processing should play whenever you get a null pointer exception. I forgot to actually create the ArrayList. So I said, oh, I want to have an ArrayList, but it's actually just null at this point. So I need to actually take an additional step and say circles equals a new. It seems rather redundant, but this is the world of Java. Many people don't like Java, but you know what? Java is also my friend, and I like Java. Okay, so new array list. If that means there's something wrong with me, then so be it. Okay, so there you can see now I have this one circle. Oh boy, how, what am I, like five minutes into this video and all I have is a circle on the screen? I hope you're still with me because this, this will get more interesting. Okay, so now I want to do, I want to do a, a few different things. <laughs> one thing I want to do is I want to have a function in the circle called grow. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say r equals r plus 1. So I want the radius to inc increase by one pixel whenever I call the grow function. And I'm going to say now every circle c.grow. You can see that circle is growing. Now the other thing I want to do is I want to stop the circle. I want to have a way of stopping the circle from growing. So one thing I should do is I'm going to write a function called edges to see has the circle touched an edge of the window. And actually if it has, I should, um, maybe I should return a Boolean true or false. Eh, I could do this in a bunch of different ways, but let's start with this. So how do I know if a circle, and, and let me just come over to the whiteboard here. Oh look, there's a happy party time. So right, if this is uh, the window, and this is a circle, if the x plus the radius is greater than the width of the window, or if x minus the radius is less than 0, then it's kind of hit that edge. So let's come back and add that. If, what did I say, x plus r is greater than width, or x minus r is less than 0, or y plus r is greater than height, or y minus r is less than 0. That should do it. And actually, I could just say return that. This is one of these shorthand things that I never use, and people always complain in the comments, like, you could have just returned the result of that. So I'm returning the result of this or that or this or that. So if any of those are true, I'm going to return true. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, I'm also going to add a variable. I'm going to call it growing. And I'm going to set it equal to false. No, true. <laughs> and I'm going to say, if growing, increase the radius by 1. OK, this is good. This is good. This is good. Now, I'm going to write a function. Uh, let's, uh, there's a bunch of different ways I could do this, but let's do it actually out here. I don't know if I love this, but I'm going to say, if c.edges, c.growing equals false. So this should stop and uh, what did I, oh, I'm missing a semicolon here because I have this like ridiculously long line of code that is very unwieldy to type, but it's come back now. This should now grow the circle until it reaches the edge, and you can see why did it stop? It touched the bottom edge down here. So this is good. I now have a circle that can grow and a circle that can stop growing. And what I want to do is I want to add new circles every time through draw. And I want to give it a random location. Uh, so I'm going to create a new circle at a random location. And I want the circles to all start not with a radius of 50, but a radius of 1. And watch what happens now. So I have all these circles. Ooh, that's kind of actually just nice on its own. They're all growing, and they're stopping as they reach the edge. But let's watch that again. Let me slow down the frame rate. 
What I want to see happen is I want all these circles to grow, but I also want them to stop growing if they touch another circle. And I, don't, I also don't want to be able to create a circle inside of another circle because I want to have these circles kind of grow to fill as much space as possible. Okay, um, so how do I do this? So the first thing that I need to do is, um, I don't know, what is the first thing that I need to do? Do you know what I want to do? I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to create a function called new circle. Um, and I'm, because I have a feeling this might get a little bit complicated. So what I'm going to try to do now here is what? I'm going to create a random x, y. Then what I want to do is say for every circle in all the circles. What I want to do is determine when I pick this x, y, is it a point that's outside of circles? <laughs> right? I don't want to, by accident, these are my circles. If I pick that point, it's no good. If I pick this point, we're in good shape. So what I need to do is I need to check. What are we going to Okay. I need to say, uh, what is the distance between this xy and that circle's xy? If the distance is less than that circle's radius, then it is inside the circle. So let's assume that this is a valid circle. If I look at all the existing circles, and it's inside one of them, it's no longer a valid circle, and I can also be done with that loop. Because if it's not valid, I can just check one of them. Now, what I want to do is, if it's valid, I want to add it to the array list. So I only want to add circles that are valid. And you can see now, if I run this again, you know, it's, everything's still overlapping, but technically speaking, it's not you can see it's not adding any circles anymore until it finds a spot that's not inside another circle. Ooh, I like this. But actually, I think what might make more sense here is to return, oh, 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 return a new circle. Otherwise, return null. So, and then this is going to be a function that returns a circle. So what I want to do is I want to say like, this, is, this function is going to attempt to find a new circle. And if it does, here it is. If I can't find one, it's null. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say uh, circle c equals new circle. If c is not equal to null, circles add c. So now I have, uh, oh, and you know what? I'm going to just call this circle. I'll call it new circle. Uh, ooh, that's uh, a little bit awkward that I have new circle in the new circle function. <laughs> Let's just call it new C. <laughs> it works, but I, you know, when we translate this to Java, okay, so this is working. This is exactly what I just had. It's trying to make these circles. Now, I need to add the part where if it touches any other circle, it also stops growing. So for every circle, if it's touching an edge, it stops growing. So first of all, I only want to do this if the circle is growing. If the circle is growing, check first if it's touching an edge. Otherwise, now I got to look at all the other circles again. And I can say Boolean overlapping. I can assume that it's not overlapping another circle. I can assume that it's not overlapping another circle. Now what I can do is I can say the distance between this particular current circle and the other circle, I need that distance. If that distance is less than what? <laughs> if that distance is less than this circle's radius plus the other, ah, my scroll went out of control, plus the other scrolls the other circle's radius, then overlapping is true. Why is that? Come over here with me, please. Because here's a circle, here's a circle, 
here's one radius, here's another radius, here's the distance between them. You can see that if the distance is longer than the sum of the two radii, then they're not overlapping. If that distance is shorter than adding the two radii together, they are, they are overlapping. So now, all I have to do is, uh, I actually don't need this overlapping variable, I just realized, because the whole point of this is I can say, if it's overlapping anything, tell it to stop growing and break. So this is now my algorithm, right? If a circle is growing, there are two reasons why I might stop it from growing. One is it might be touching the edge. Otherwise, it might be overlapping with another circle. So if either one, it should stop. So now, let's run this and see what we get. Hmm. Seems to me that these circles aren't growing. Ah, what did I, oh, oh my goodness. I like to ring the bell when I discover a really ridiculous bug. Look at this. For every circle C, check every other circle called other. Well, guess what? C is gonna check every other circle. And you know what C is? It's one of those every other circles. So I need to also make sure as long as C does not C does not equal other. As long as it's not the same object, then I can do this test. There we go. So now we can see, here we go. I'm just filling this space and, you know, it made some big circles at the beginning. Now it's making some smaller ones because it keeps trying to find more spots where it could possibly fit a circle. And we can let this run and eventually it's going to do it. Now, we could say, we could, we could do some stuff to make this a little fancier. Um, so, the, but here's the thing. I, this is a pause point. I'm going to do something more of this in a second because I want these circles to form a letter or a shape. But what I could do here is I could start to think about, well, what are some ways, you know, should I only start the circles where the user clicks the mouse? Should I start the circles along a sine wave pattern? Should I start the circles like, you know, randomly, you know, what types of, what type of color, what type of rules should I apply to when and where I start the circles? And you could probably create more geometric kinds of interesting patterns. So I would go with this, go forth and make your rainbow circle packing magic animated things. What are other ways you could animate the circles? What are things you could do besides just drawing circles? This idea of filling a space. But one thing I do want to do, a couple of things here is, you can see like the overlapping is a little bit awkward. So I think I probably could kind of clean that up by saying like, because the, the pixel width of those circles is two. So, you know, I could probably, oh, and the other thing is, oh, oh a minus two, I mean. Um, so you can see this is making it a little bit better so that the circles actually kind of like stop and, and abut each other a little bit. It sort of depends on the size. But so we could refine that and, you know, that, also, like, I could probably have the circle grow um, a little bit slower, and then it gives it a little bit more uh, resolution in terms of how close it gets. But these are, these are smaller points. The point that I want to actually do is, I think that thing that would be useful to add, is I want to, let's say I want to, uh, I want to make sure I add 10 new circles every frame. So I'm going to say uh, count equals zero. And while count is less than total, whoops, create a new circle. If new circle is not null, then count goes up. And then we're done. So this would guarantee that it's going to like keep trying to find more circles every frame up to 10. The problem with that, and you can see it's filling it much more quickly. The problem with this is it's going to get stuck at some point in an infinite loop. Because at some point it's not going to be able to find 10 new spots anymore because the whole screen is going to be full. So um, what I think would make sense to do in that case would be to have some sort of like, I'm going to also have a variable called attempts. And I'm going to say uh, attempt, attempts plus plus. And if attempts, is greater than a thousand, then just let's be done. I, you know, I can even say like no loop. So I can completely stop the program from running and I can say, you know, print line finished. So this is just sort of like useful to say like, oh, if it took a thousand tries and couldn't find any spots for the circles, then it should be done. We can kind of zoom in and see what this is doing. It's still finding more spots. At some point, it's going to stop finding spots. I'll let this run for a little bit. Okay, so while this is running, um, 
I'm pretty sure that I did this correctly because uh, I'm waiting for it to say finish down here in the console. But while, while this is running, let's go and let's, let's add one more thing to this. Wow, I guess it's still just finding spots. It's not done. There's just so many spots left. Okay, it's really filling it in there. You know, the other thing I could do is I could start the circles with like a little bit of a radius, like not one, but like two. Anyway, um, but okay, the, all that's neither here nor there. You can, tweak the, you can tweak the stuff yourself, but uh, I assume it will get to finish at some point. What I want to do right now is I have on my desktop here is I have this image. And what one trick that I can do, so there's a couple different ways I could decide, there's a lot of different ways I could decide where to seed the uh, circle points. One way that I could do that is I could say, oh, I'm gonna have a source image. I'm gonna read the pixels of that source image and I'm only ever going to be allowed to start circles where there's a white pixel in that source image. And that's what I'm gonna do right now to make this 2017 message, replace it with your own message <laughs> later. Okay, um, so let's see, is it still going? Oh, I stopped it. Urgh. Okay, so uh, let's, let's do this. And I'm going to save this as circle packing animated text. And I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to go to the sketch folder. I'm going to create a folder called data and I'll put this 2017 PNG in there. Uh, what is the size of that image is important. Uh, the size of that image is 900 by 400. Okay. <laughs> so let's make uh, the window also 900 by 400. Uh, let's say a P, P image image, so I'm going to say image equals load image uh, 2017.png and then I'm going to just say background just to make sure that image is there. We can see the image is there now. 2017, I'm drawing circles on top of it. Yay! <laughs> okay, so now what do I do here? What I want to do is I need to say image.load pixels because what am I going to do? I'm going to read the pixels of that image. Then I'm going to say for int x equals zero, x is less than image dot width, x plus plus, for int y equals zero, y is less than image dot height, y plus plus. What I want to do here in setup is I want to have a nested loop, a loop that looks at every single pixel. I want to know, is the pixel white or black? So how do I look at the pixel? Well, the pixels, by the way, even though I, I'm thinking of them as x, y locations, they are just a linear list. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, all the way up to 900 times 400 minus 1. But, and I have some videos that cover how this sort of pixel stuff works, but I can find the index into that pixel array, the one-dimensional pixel array, by saying the x location plus the y location multiplied by the image's width. You can think about that makes sense. If the image was five pixels wide, it's going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, right? 0, 5, 10. So you can sort of see how that works. It's the row plus no, it's the column plus what row it is times the width of those columns. Okay, so now I'm going to say the color is image.pixels index. And then the uh, brightness, I'm just going to look at the brightness of that color. If the brightness of that color is greater than, I don't know, one, <laughs> then I've got a white pixel. Right? I could say if it's greater than 254 probably, but in this case, I'm just going to have a really simple test. If it's greater than one, am I standing in front of my code all this time? Ugh. Okay. If it's greater than one, oh boy, this video, I hope it's not totally ruined. Um, if it's greater than one, then I found a bright pixel. So what do I need? I want to have an array list of spots. And those spots, I want to have a list of possible spots that the, that the circle packing algorithm can pick from. And each one of those spots is essentially a vector. Processing has a class called pvector that stores an x and a y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, uh, right before I do this, I'm going to say spots equals a new array list full of p-vector objects, and if the brightness is good, spots.add a new p-vector at that x and y location. Ta-da! Spots.add a p-vector at that x and y location. So now if I run this, I'm just going to say print line spots.size. Oop, y may not have been initialized. Whoops, that should be a zero. 
So great. So this looks like it worked. It found 77,759 possible spots. So now, what can I do here? Here, instead of creating a random x and a y anywhere in the window, what I want to do is say, um, I want a random number that is between 0 and the length of that spot's array list. So the random function gives me a random number between 0 and the length of the list. And I want to convert that random number into an integer because I want to use that uh, to, as the index to get me a particular spot out of that array list. And now I can say x is spot.x and y is spot.y. And now if I, oh, what did I miss? I guess I just need one more closed parenthesis. Now if I run this, oh, whoops, I ruined it by drawing the image. So let's stop drawing the image. And we can see there we now have our circle packing algorithm, but it is only picking as original spots, spots that are, that are available uh, in the actual, um, as part of those white pixels from that source image. So you can see we have this nice circle packing algorithm and it's still finding spots. I think it's because... Hold on a sec. Let's, let's, let's be a little bit more. Let's say that uh, it has to be, um, the valid spot has to be, um, it doesn't have to just be the distance between it and the center um, has to be less than the radius plus like a little bit of buffer zone, like two pixel buffer zone. So that I think will uh, cause it to finish. You can see there's lots of ways I could futz with like what it's actually going to, like what if I just want one circle? Each frame is going to pick circles much less frequently. And so the circles are going to have like a longer time to grow. And again, you can start to think about color here, how you're picking the circles, when you're picking the circles. You know, not being able to pick the same point twice would probably make a lot of sense. And um, here we go. Uh, animated circle packing, making letter forms. Now, this is the end of this video, Cody Challenge. Thank you very much. I hope you make something creative with it. You think of a message. You think of some other type of pattern. You think about color, animation in a different way. Share it with me, all that stuff. But I do want to say is I am using um, a source image to find the paths of these letters, which is great in the sense that you could use a source image not just to do letters or numbers. You could use you know, a painting and then do circle packing to like fill a space with colors from the painting. There's all sorts of possibilities there. But one thing I do want to look at, and perhaps in a uh, future coding challenge, maybe even the next one, <laughs> is how to actually compute these paths, um, how to actually get these paths of letters dynamically in a program. So the user could type in the word hello, and then suddenly you could fill uh, a circle packing space or whatever with that with that particular word. And I'm going to look at that in JavaScript in the browser because P5 has some nice functionality for that. Um, you can do it in processing also with a library called Geomerative, which I'll try to link in this video's description. But um, that's something you might look for. Okay, so thanks for tuning in to this coding challenge. I'm back. It's 2017. I made a coding challenge. I think things are still okay. People will hopefully watch this. Hope you make something with it and talk to you soon. Goodbye.